Hello, intrepid followers, subscribers, and watchers of my YouTube videos. It's time for a comic book review. I have not done one of these in a while. Are you guys ready? Let's get into it. All right, so this one's a big one. I'm not just reviewing one comic book or two comic books. I'm reviewing a crossover, a 22 issue crossover. So what it's called is X of Swords. It is the crossover for this year for the X-Men comic book. There's a seven book crossover over a three to about three month period. So that's a lot of books and some of them came twice a month or came back to back near the end of one month and beginning of the other. And there's at least three books that were specials that were sort of like a, a beginning, a middle, and an end book to the whole saga. And it is a saga. It's more than a crossover. I would call this a saga. This is an event that was more than just a crossover of these seven seven books with all these different groups of people. It was a definite like event that's bigger than a crossover. I'd say it's on par with the amount that had to be done for it and published, I'd say it's on par with like Infinite Crisis in the um, in the DC universe, which by the way, Marvel and X-Men are one publisher and DC and Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman are another publisher, if you didn't know that. So I'm not gonna go through each and every book because that would make for a long review. I'm gonna just give you a really quick, pretty good overview of what I think of the event and some of my favorite parts of the event, and what I'm looking forward to that's gonna happen next, maybe. <laughs> so the, the whole premise of X of Swords, just to give you an idea, is the, the mutants of the Marvel Universe have decided to create their own place, their own nation, their own like land on Earth, that can be a safe haven, a place for people who are mutants to come and live, where they don't have to worry about persecution or destruction or, or death. And come to find out the, the nation and the island that they created, the continent that they created to be their home, actually had a second part to it that disappeared, that was cut off from it long ago because the, the island in, in and of itself that they're on is called Krakoa. And it is alive and is essentially, I don't, I don't know if it's actually canon or not, but it's a mutant itself. Um, and so there's a part of it that had some millennia ago split off from it. It was called Araco or became called Araco. And what they did is there's a bunch of people on Araco who want to come back to Krakoa, but they want to come back for a evil intent. They don't want to say, yay, other mutants, let's go join our family. Big hugs. It's no, hey, here's a sword. I'm gonna kill you. So what do they do? Well, they have to cross over another place, another um, fictional place that's in the Marvel Universe called Otherworld. And Otherworld, it's another, that's like a whole other story. <laughs> but let's just say it's like this interdimensional gateway land, sort of like an Ellis Island for the interdimensional like multiverse of comic or universes within the Marvel publishing universe. So to get from Araco to Krakoa, the Arakans need to pass through Otherworld. Well, the leader and owner of Otherworld, her name is Opal Luna Saturnin says, no, 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 that's not gonna happen. You wanna get through here? 10 people from, uh, from Krakoa, the, the mutants, the X-Men, and 10 people from Racco will have to have a fight, almost like a contest of champions. And they all have to have swords, swords, and more swords, 10 swords each. So that's the setup. That's the premise for the Arakans to reach Krakoa and Earth and destroy everything. They have to pass through Otherworld and fight the others in a sort of contest of champions. So the contest really is a great idea. I think the concept overall is a fun plot line. It's a great way to bring in characters we haven't seen in a while. Some of these characters came from one or two specific 
stories, other comic books that were from the past in the Marvel X-Men universe. So it was great to bring that lore back together and bring in these characters you haven't seen in a while or may not even fully known about. And they do a great job of setting things up and then keeping you informed as you go. One of the things that's really great is right now in the, in the Marvel Universe and the X-Men specific universe is one creative um, person is sort of in charge of the comic books right now. And his name is um, Jonathan Hickman. And Hickman is a writer, a creator. And so what he's done is he's do, he does these sort of like info um, pages throughout each of the books that lets you know some info that's going on, a synopsis of things that are happening. One of the third, first things is every co comic book starts with this. It has a short synopsis of what's going on in the issue and then who's appearing in the issue. And eventually it gets to a point where it actually becomes sort of a, um, a list of who's who and who's still alive and who's not alive. Because yes, some people die or sort of disappear in this comic book series. So that makes it for an interesting run. Um, a few of the people you expect to have swords are the people who already have swords. Like one of the characters is, well, Magic, Ileana Rasputin. She already has a sword, so check. Uh, Wolverine, he's had a sword in the past that he gets his again, check. So really, the first few issues, the first, actually within the first two to three issues, they set up who has a sword and who gets one. At first I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna take forever to set up who has a sword. But luckily it went pretty fast. It went pretty fast and easy because, well, it's 22 chapters. That's 22 issues. And, you know, I can tell you right now, if you want to get them in the floppy form, that's cool. But they're not inexpensive. So if you're someone who's like, wow, I really want to read this, but I don't want to have to get all of these issues separately and try to figure out what number they are, which it says on the number what they are of the number. Um, you can wait for the trade paperback or the, or the hardcover to come out and read it all at once there. That's totally fine. But if you're more into floppies, yes, they exist, they're out there. You just need to find a comic book store that sells them or can send them to you by the mail so you can get them all. But again, it's pretty hefty. So if you're gonna have a mail it to you, it's gonna be expensive. Um, I don't wanna be too all over the place with this. So let's get back to the story. The story runs really well. Like I said at the beginning, I thought, oh my gosh, they're gonna, they're gonna take forever to get everyone their swords and that's just gonna make it so long. 10 people, that's like 10 issues per person because in the beginning it felt like that. Like it felt like the first two issues, one person came forward, of course, magic. But they made it go fast. They had other plot lines going on. They had an interesting subplot with Mr. Sinister and his group, which are the Hellions um, comic book. And that was an interesting subplot I really liked. Um, it did not have a happy ending because, well, we're talking about Mr. Sinister here. Does anything really have a happy ending with Mr. Sinister? I, I, I can't think of one. Really, I can't. So we have a few characters who were brought in who we haven't seen in a while, some that have um, been neglected, you could say, in some cases, and some that have a new purpose for the storyline. Um, in the end, of course, you know, things turn out pretty well. But like I said, some people, some people don't make it. I'm not going to say they died completely, but we don't know their fate. Um, one of the things, a uh, side note about Krakoa, it has um, been given the ability for people, mutants who die, to be resurrected again, so they don't really die. Um, but they have a little snag when they're in other worlds. Something is occurring to where if they die in other worlds, and they try to resurrect them back at Krakoa, things don't go fully right. So that's a little snag in the plot to keep it from like, oh no, the character died, don't worry, we'll bring them back. Oh, no, that's a bad idea. That person is, they're not doing well now. That's uh, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so that's the side note. Um, so at least two or three characters meet a um, sad ending so far, but like I said, you know, they brought, they, they made it look like one of the characters in the recent issues, spoiler alert, died, but then she, of course, was resurrected. So, you know, 
there's there's a chance that these three or four characters could come back at any one moment in some way or some form. Um, overall, I have to say, uh, going in, I was sort of a little like, oh my gosh, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to do this? Do I really want <laughs> to invest this much time and effort into it? And it, at first, I thought, oh, sure, this will be fun. This will be neat. But I, I did feel in the be at the beginning of it, it was going to go really slow. But it picked up pace by the, what's the, by the ninth issue. It really did pick up pace. They put up a lot of different plot developments. And they, they didn't, like, interrupt too many of the storylines that were already going on in the books that were going on. Because, of course, for a crossover to occur throughout the seven books, that means whatever storyline they have going on in that moment has to come to an abrupt stop. And if they're in the middle of a very deep and heavy plot line, that can be a little hard. Um, now, when it comes to the seven books that are in the, the, re, in the, in the current run of X-Men books, I wasn't fully reading all of them, so I don't know for sure if it's affected a lot of them. But at least two of the books, they were already setting it up. Like, it was written in the plots that something was coming. Uh, Excalibur... It was really pretty much in the plot line that this was coming, um, the way things were set up, because you have Captain Britain and his sister uh, Elizabeth Braddock, Psylocke, who they they gain certain new powers, and so she gains a sword. Um, Apocalypse, he starts to take more of a center stage in Excalibur and other comic, the other other comic books in the line, which it's interesting because that's another thing that this set of comic books does is it sets up. A small section of uh, Apocalypse's backstory that was sort of like empty or sort of black, like we were we didn't really know about. So it sort of retcons a little bit of his storyline, but it adds to his storyline. It adds a little more depth and interesting characters. Um, it brings in his first ever uh, um, Horseman of the Apocalypse and the idea of what they look like and the way they are drawn. It's, I, I like it. I mean, here's some of them right here. Um, you know what? Actually, I'll insert a better picture right here so you can see the whole thing um, up close and really good. I mean, just the the design is very, got more of an Egyptian look to it because, of course, that's where he essentially was from, where his character developed from. So overall, I really enjoy the whole storyline. I'm glad I invested the time into it. Um, if I was to give it uh, any kind of like, I don't know, like rating on a scale of zero to five, let's use, um, let's use Mohawks. <laughs> How many Mohawks do I give this? Because I do have some pictures of me with a Mohawk. So we'll use my pictures of me with a Mohawk. I would give this, compared to other X-Men crossovers that have happened over the years, Comparing those, so not just comparing the books themselves, but comparing the crossovers compared to other crossovers that the X-Men have done, I would give this, I would give this a good four out of five Mohawks. Um, and I do that because there's been a lot of crossovers. I mean, almost every year they've had some sort of crossover event and they've done a really great job with them. Some of them not as well. Um, you know what? If you guys like me talking about these crossovers, I will totally do more videos. I will do two more videos about the crossovers if you'd like. Um, so just in the comments, let me know if you'd like me to do any crossovers, uh, uh, other reviews of the crossovers. And the way it ends is great. It sets up the next development, the next part of the storyline, which I think is going to be very exciting. Um, so yeah, so if you are interested in picking this up, I say go ahead and do it. And if you want to not get them in the floppies, in the, in the separate ones by themselves, then great. Wait for it to come out in trade paperback or hardcover. Um, there's one thing that's a standout for me. One of the standouts for me from this is this. This is called the Exo Swords Handbook. What I like about it the most is it, it, it harkens back to an earlier comic book that Marvel used to put out called the the Marvel Handbook of uh, the uni Marvel Universe. And in it, it showed character um, information and character, uh, like, history synopsises. 
and it had pictures and it was really well written and then it had these like stats and like statistical data stuff which I always love um, so make sure that wh whether you get or not you at least get the Marvel the handbook the Ex Ex of Swords handbook not the Marvel Universe handbook so you can look that over and see all the different things that are going on in it um, so yeah uh, that's it for me that's my that's my review I hope you enjoyed it and again um, leave a comment below letting me know if you've read the this crossover or if you want me to do another review of another crossover um that's happened in the marvel or dc universe i will totally do that i am totally down with that and if you really like what you're seeing that i'm doing either with this video or the other videos i'm doing so yeah i have a patreon if you'd like to join me over on patreon you can i'll put a there's a link below for that just to end everything i'd like to give a shout out to my current patreon supporters Ta-da! and then if you um like what you saw here today of course give this video a like and share it with other people. And here's my end screen where there's some other videos you might be interested in watching. And here is my uh, subscribe button. And uh, subscribe if you can, okay? Thanks everyone, and I'll see you real soon.